still have my Christmas lights on. It's almost April, by the way, because, well, you know, it's like the bling, like the diamonds. No? Hi, my name is Eric, this is Jewelry Simplified, and today we're going to be talking about diamonds. I'll try to keep it brief and give you as much information as possible in about five minutes. Ready? <sighs> Need my coffee. Start the timer. Let's go. Number one question usually that everybody has is what color diamonds come in? Well, a lot of them. You're going to find them in yellow, white, orange, green, purple even, and they come from all the different parts of the world. But today, for the sake of this episode, we're just gonna focus on white diamonds specifically. There's going to be another seminar with the 100 million years history of diamonds, but that is gonna be for another episode. So what is a diamond? Diamond is 99.95% carbon, and it was formed from extreme heat and pressure somewhere 45 million years to 2.5 billion years ago. So yeah, your diamond can be somewhere around 45 million years young, I guess. So are diamonds rare? Is there a stockpile of diamonds somewhere? Are prices being artificially inflated? Well, yes and no, but let's dive into history a little bit. So in 1888, the company by the name of De Beers appeared and they achieved something of a monopoly in the diamond world. They owned and controlled a little bit over 80% in the diamond market. And of course, that resulted in some of the prices being artificially controlled. Nowadays, it's a completely different story. Some of the reasons are because of the competition that appeared throughout the years, some of the reasons because of the Kimberley Accord, but I'm really not going to dive into details about those facts at this point. So nowadays, their market share is about 30-ish percent, and the diamond market is completely different from what it was back in the days. So what is the value of diamonds? Well, it depends on many factors. We all want our diamonds to shine and sparkle, to be as bright and vibrant as possible. And the more bright and clean the diamond is, the higher is the price. The most common and simple scale is what is called the four C's. The cut, the carrot, the clarity, and of course, the color. But actually, there are more subcategories which influence the price of your diamond. So the carrot is the size. So the bigger it is, the more valuable it is. Simple. Color is exactly what it is. So you want your white diamond to be as white as possible. In this instance, white means less hues of other color. So most of the common one is yellow. So there's a whole system how to acquire your desired color. So for example, if you're looking for a yellow diamond at a lesser price, maybe you want to take a white diamond which has a lot of yellow hue in it, but it's still not classified as a fancy yellow diamond. About the fancy color diamonds, we're going to discuss more in the color diamond category. Clarity. So nothing is perfect in our world, and of course, diamonds are the same thing. They have imperfections, which are called inclusions in diamonds, and the less inclusions you're gonna have in your diamonds, the better. This is where the scale of VVS, VS, SI1 comes in. So it means very, very small inclusions, very small inclusions, slight inclusions. The GIA Institute of America, it basically has one of the most common scales, and please have a look, cut. Well, this one is tricky. There's a whole science behind light refraction in diamonds, and it took decades to actually achieve the best way to cut the diamond to get the maximum beauty at the maximum light and the maximum brilliance of your diamond. If cut incorrectly, your diamond can be too shallow or too deep, and then the light is going to get lost inside your diamond, and that is what is commonly called as a dead diamond. So basically, you don't see any light refracting from it. So how does the cut affect the price? Well, if you're going to take a simple or the most classical cut, which is going to be the round cut, just to give you an idea, every single time when you cut the diamond from the rough stone, you lose about two-thirds or about 66% of your rough stone. So in the end, to get your one carat diamond, you have to have a three carat rough stone. To get your three carat diamond, you have to have a nine carat rough stone. Makes sense. Some of the other cuts besides the round one have actually much bigger waist when you cut the diamond. So for example, if you take the marquee cut, or it looks like a cat's eye, it's actually pretty amazing. So that one is gonna have even more waist. So what it means in the end, if you're gonna look at one carat round cuts and one carat marquee cut, marquee cut is gonna be a little bit more in price and value because of all the wasted material to achieve this cut. Simple. Now, one of the most important questions is what to choose. The answer, whatever you want. 
So the golden middle and the golden standard is usually considered the GH color and SI clarity because really you cannot really see the imperfections with the naked eye and in the end it just allows you to save a little bit more. For example, some of the companies like us, for example, wink wink, allow you to trade in your previously acquired pieces. Pieces? allow you to trade in your previously acquired pieces. Get something as a half a carat or one carat right now and trade it in in a year, two years, five years maybe and get something bigger in it. And you just pay the difference. You already probably know all the different ways to acquire jewelry nowadays. So I hope I made it. As always, let us know if you have any questions and see you in the next one. Ciao.